Good morning, members of council. Welcome to this special for council. Uh, welcome to members of the press and our prospective new member from St. Agnes, who is most welcome in the chamber. Um, welcome also to Mr. Williams, who's joined us from our monitoring officer, who's joined us from the mainland. Easy when the weather is like this. Would that it were always the case. Right. So this meeting has been um, requested by the following councillors. Councillor Mrs. Savile, Councillor, uh, Councillor Sims, Councillor Mrs. Peacock, Councillor Dorian Smith, Councillor McCarthy, and Councillor Mrs. Mumford. Um, declarations of interest. No. Nope. Uh, urgent items, I have none at this point. So I'm going to move on to part one, reports requiring a decision. Uh, item number three, the new governance re arrangements. I'm going to um, ask the head of uh, League and Democratic Services to take us through this, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, members. Um, delighted to be with you today. Um, so, effectively, I think all members will be aware um, of the chronology as to how we're here today. Um, there was the meeting, of the full council meeting, on the 7th of March. I think that followed a further meeting of the Democratic Processes Panel on the 16th of March, which um, led to this meeting being requisitioned. Um, you'll see the recommendations are quite clearly set out in, on page one. Uh, and effectively, the key decision, I guess, for members today is to determine whether to stick with the status quo or to go with option A or option B, as detailed and outlined in the report and in Appendix 1. Um, I don't think there's a huge amount, really, for me to say, um, other than... Um, obviously, the report builds on the report that you received on the 7th of March. I think helpfully so. I think it deals with a number of the issues which, um, listening into the meeting on the 7th of March, I heard were raised on that occasion, uh, and also, I believe, deals with issues that were raised by the Democratic Processes Panel when it met on the 16th of March, uh, and hopefully to, to, for those who voted against um, option A, uh, on, on the 7th of March. Hopefully those issues are well and fully dealt with in this report and hopefully have some confidence in it. Um, as I say, you were, you were quite clear of my view um, that I gave to the council meeting on the 7th of March that I support option A uh, quite strongly. Um, I understand option B is an alternative. Um, I still believe that option A is the preferred way to go. I think there was some concern expressed at the meeting on the 7th of March as to whether it was right for this council to dictate to the new council what the governance arrangement should be. And I did answer the question on that occasion, but now happy to confirm in person uh, that in my view it's absolutely right for this council to determine the governance arrangements that should apply. Um, I see that in addition, obviously, to the monthly council meetings that are proposed through option A, it is also proposed that the Democratic Processes Panel, as a subcommittee of the Council, meets on a regular basis. So I think, for me, um, any um, outstanding concerns that you may have that it may not work or that the new Council may wish to change the arrangements agreed um, today um, is that there are obviously um, full processes in place to enable that to happen promptly. Uh, and I do believe that it is right for you to set what you believe to be the right governance arrangements for the new council, but that obviously in the new arrangements there's plenty of opportunity for the council to review, and it should do, because these are new arrangements, and I recognise that. There are plenty of opportunity for the new council to review the workings of the new arrangements and to recommend any changes um, that are appropriate. Um, I think it has been suggested that possibly the issue of lead members um, is something that should delay a decision today. I don't believe that's, that's necessary. Um, clearly, you have to have a lead member in, in terms of children's services. So that's a statutory requirement. There isn't a statutory requirement to have other lead members. The report sets out that the, the possible additional lead members that could be considered, which I think the Democratic Processes Panel considered. And I think that is something that's quite right for the new council to consider if it feels appropriate, but I don't think it's something you have to determine today in order to give your approvals to either option A or option B. So I, the report is very full. It's had the um, – Bob has obviously done major drafting of it, but had full cooperation from me and my staff in looking at it. As monitoring officer, I'm quite happy to confirm that it is lawful. I think it's, it is um, – a sensible way to proceed, uh, and I'm more than happy, Madam Chairman, to ask any, answer any questions that there may be. Thank you. Thank you. 
Councillor Mrs. Stovell. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Mumford. Um, yes, I would like to um, second Councillor Savills um, uh, for recommendation for option A. I also think um, we've got the support of um, Ashling Hick, who's written a very good report. Um, and I think this is the best way forward, as I've said before. And um, I think the... Uh, the lead members can be held over, apart from the lead member for children, can be held over to the next council. Um, I fully support option A. Thank you. Councillor Billsborough. Chairman, I have a question to ask for a start, which worries me. We're only here today because six people decided they didn't like the decision of the meeting on March the 7th that we made, and therefore... They're quite within their rights to call a meeting to try and reverse that decision. The same thing could happen today. If we have a close vote, you could get six people who decide they don't like it and call another meeting. What I think is wrong with this, in principle, to take advantage of standing orders, it's quite legal, well, we didn't like that decision, let's have another meeting. And I think, without being derogatory to the six members who've called it, that's why they've called it. They've used standing orders to try and reverse the decision that was made democratically on March the 7th. And I'll have, have more to say later. Thank you, Councillor Billsborough. Um, these are the democratic workings of Council. Would the monitoring officer like to comment on that? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, Yes, I understand the point Council Billsborough has made, but just to obviously make it clear that it is entirely within your standing orders for six members to requisition. This is an important decision. It was a very close vote, and under those circumstances, it, it, it doesn't surprise me that the, that the six members acted as they did. Obviously, it's clearly preferable if there's a decisive vote one way or the other, but obviously I do appreciate the point you make, and yes, it's quite possible that if the vote's close again, that, but one would hope that uh, that can be avoided. Councillor Mrs. Peacock. I was one of those signatories. Um, I believe in the democratic processes, but I have a concern for the off-islands. I feel that if it had have stayed as it was, it would have been nigh on impossible for particularly new councillors to take on all the work with separate committees at the word go. Apart from learning how to be a councillor, they had to pick up um, all the changes and make decisions. 
and they had no background, as it were, to choose from. And I would have gone for option B until I rang uh, Mrs. Hicks, Hicks's note, and that changed my mind because I do believe that children's and adult services are the most important things we do. And uh, it says that by dissolving the Children's Committee, it could have significant benefits to children. And I feel that if I was to vote against doing that, then I would be depriving the new councillors of not doing their work properly. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take Councillor Mrs. Mumford, and then I'm going to read um, some comments from Councillor Mrs. Grotick, who is on vacation at the moment, but I said I would convey her thoughts to the meeting. So I shall take Councillor Mumford, and then I shall read the thoughts of Councillor Mrs. Grotick. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think the people who voted against this last time, they were looking for more information and more detail. And I think they've got it now. So I was hoping that perhaps the people who voted against it last time, with all the detail that has been given, and especially the report from Ashling Hick, that that would change their minds and they could go for option A. Thank you. So, as I said, I'm about to read the views of Councillor Mrs. Grotick. Not my views, Councillor Grotick's views. As colleagues appreciate, I propose this restructured decision be deferred in March. This was to allow for more detailed work to be done around several key areas. It was also to allow the new council to have input and choice over its working arrangements. I am still of the view that this project is a work in progress. I still have concerns as to how the complex responsibilities of both the Children and Young People's Committee and, and the Community Services Committees can be discharged within any proposed new structure. I believe much more information needs to be available, especially around lead member role profiles, however they will be supported. I would also hope for formal links between lead members and the senior leadership team, corporate leadership team. Uh, I do recognize the need for change as the council reduces in member numbers. I am glad that the LGA will support whatever is decided. I am also glad that council will have the support of our monitoring officer and the 151 officer. I was glad to receive an email from Andy Brown stating that he believes the planned savings can be made even after a short deferral. Off-island councillors may be under some pressure in the short term, but I am puzzled by the notion that they would be disenfranchised. I find this emotive language difficult to justify. I also think that any off-island councillor undertaking a lead member role could well have a greater workload than that of a present chairman, and that possibly without the support of a vice chairman as at present. I believe we need more work on the possible scrutiny arrangements, which are pivotal. Finance arrangements also need work. I think savings will be difficult to make. In short, I do not agree that many, many members' concerns have been addressed, though some may have been. I accept the work done, but it appears to me that we are deconstructing one working arrangement and still have no firm picture of the proposed new structure. Uh, I would have liked to have heard at a workshop perhaps from all our officers to hear how they hope any new structure will work in practice. The new council should have a voice. As I say, those are the comments of Councillor Mrs. Grotick. They are not my comments. Councillor Mrs. Savile. Thank you. 
Thank you. Obviously, that's just one voice, and the new council will have 60 members. But thank you for that. Councillor Molson. Yeah, I, I'm reasonably relaxed about option A or, or option B, um, but there are two points that <clears throat> I would like to make. Uh, as far as the democratic process is concerned, I note reading a report that there is likely to be a delegation of decision-making to officers. Um, I think we ought to be cautious about that. There is, there is a, a comment in there that some of it could be delegated out to officers. I think we ought to be very cautious about that. Uh, and accept the responsibility within the elected members rather than delegating decision-making to officers. The, the only other point that I would make is that the, the last point is point six on the first page was that um, the review of the governments before the end of next year, I would actually like to see it before then to make sure that the arrangements are working efficiently well before 12 months is up. I think 12 months is probably a period that's slightly too long for that. That's fine. Thank you. Councillor Dorian Smith. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, just to clarify, I put my name down as one of the six people requesting the meeting, uh, not in any sense to be anti-democratic, um, but it was really a request for further information, and that has now very helpfully clearly been provided. Um, I have always believed it was right for the council, our existing council, um, <clears throat> to make a decision which can, of course, be then reviewed and amended as time goes on under the new council. As an off-island councillor, at the meeting on the 17th of March, I spoke very strongly that it would put a, an undue burden uh, on off-island councillors as single councillors, whether they had lead roles or not, um, simply in terms of covering the ground under the present system would be uh, extremely difficult if you have a busy life and other commitments. So I, um, I do very much support option A and I hope that those who were against it last time will feel that the information, the additional information provided um, helps them understand the uh, benefits of uh, making a, a decision now. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sims. <coughs> no. I think when it came to Council on March the 7th, I think a number of us who had attended a lot of the DPP panel meetings, um, was, uh, there was a lot of implicit information in there because we all knew it, if you know what I mean. And I think this is, this is as uh, the paper now has actually opened it up a little. I think it's much clearer now than what it was perhaps in March. I think it's a, maybe an element of complacency that everybody else knew it, though they didn't. So I think this is much better. Now, Ashlyn called me up this morning because I asked her to ring, ring because Fran asked me to get hold of it. Now she is very happy with the, well, as she presented it, the merging of those committees but her, her concern is we need strong lead member roles and she's very, very clear on that but otherwise she's worried about how it goes forward. So just putting that view forward but I actually, my personal view is that lead member roles should be fleshed out by the new council and I think what we've got now is quite useful because we're giving them a, a, a pretty strong structure, but it's a willow, it's not an oak tree, it's not going to get blown down. Because if we make this too prescriptive, then they're going to have issues trying to, to dismantle it to, to get what they want. So I think this is a loose enough structure, particularly with lead member roles, for them to, the new council to resolve and sort out for them themselves. And I think probably by September, it'll be all hunky-dory, and certainly by the end of next year, as you, as you mentioned, Ted, that they will have been reviewed, and I think will be very useful going forward. And a lot better than what, if we don't do anything, we're just giving them a ball and chain to go forward with. Thank you. Councillor Billsborough. Right, Chairman. First of all, I think when we talk about the new council, it is not a, a new body in the distance. Uh, without wishing to forecast the outcome of the elections, at least half the members... Uh, I think, of the new, of, of the new council uh, will be the existing one. They will not be new. But the other thing is, which worries me, is that um, we are going to have uh, meetings, uh, say, each uh, Thursday of each month, etc. Uh, sorry, uh, a Thursday in each month, where we deal with most of the business. Now, normally, in the summer... The evenings are in the winter. Uh, the um, meetings are in the evenings. 
all, nearly all council meetings and committees are in the evenings during the summer. And I find it difficult to get my head round if they're going to be in the evenings, uh, are these Thursday meetings, uh, one per month, are, are going to cope with all the business? Can anybody answer me this for a start? I think the idea is more regular meetings would mean that the, um, the burden on uh, the agendas would be lessened. Okay, Chairman. Well, broadly speaking, I think option B is the least of the evils. And I say evils, not being derogatory, but I would not have dismantled the whole system uh, because there's been a reduction in the number of members. So option C could have been tweaked. So be it. I don't think it was necessary to do all this. And what gets under my skin is, I read through it and you see, well, to do this and to save money. And there are instances, which I will not go into now, where the democratic system is in danger of being, uh, what's the word, injured by, people, by officers making decisions and delegation of powers, and I would treat that very uh, cautiously. Uh, uh, I can't vote for, for option A, definitely not. Uh, op option B, perhaps, but there's no reason why the new council cannot make the final decision. It's an insult mm. to them to say, well, they can't do it, uh, and therefore I may or may not vote for option B, but not A. There is no intention to insult the new council, rather to have them benefit from the experience of existing members, and I know I have said this before, who cannot be deemed to have a conflict of interest because they are an outgoing council. It is, as Councillor Mrs. Peacock said a short while ago, a big call for new members to learn the ropes and to review the democratic processes. It is our duty to help them by giving, as Councillor Sims said, a loose enough structure to give guidance, but not to shackle them in any way. It could have been avoided, Chairman, if, if the whole process had started earlier. Instead of now, we're pushed into a corner against the wall saying we have to make decisions because of the time factor. Councillor Billsborough, we have been working on these arrangements uh, we started having discussions in 2014. The DPP has been talking about this for the past two years. Would that all council decisions re receive this much attention? Councillor Barclay. Sorry, oh, sorry, I thought it was your right. I beg your pardon. Councillor Nellums. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think Councillor Savile hit the nail on the head when she mentioned scrutiny. Um, since October the 28th, there have been seven meetings of the DPP of which everybody has been able to attend. Yes, in March the, the vote was a close vote, but I think, as Councillor Savile says, since then new information has come through and scrutiny is one of the things that really we must look at and I think that scrutiny is coming through already and also I think that looking at the arrangements that we mustn't forget that we have the, the advice from um, Mr Williams and I think we shouldn't really miss that advice. Um, you know, he suggests that it's not appropriate to admit miss the opportunity and I don't think we should. I think it's a very well set out mm. set of principles and again I think as an off-islander at the moment that it is going to put a lot of work on certain individuals and I don't think that's a possibility. Yes we've been working in a, with a, a lower number of councillors recently but that doesn't mean it makes it easy. Um, but I think the point of scrutiny is really strong and whatever we choose today that scrutiny will keep going and keep going. So I, I think we, I would like to support um, A, the proposal, because it seems the correct and right thing to do. Thank you. Councillor Daly. Thank you, Chairman. Um, um, there's a number of things about this report that I find disturbing, but the main thing I want to concentrate on is what Mike Ellams has been talking about, that scrutiny. I don't find anywhere in this report proper arrangements for scrutiny. Um, I see on page 10 um, that it's suggested that the chairman of the council should be the scrutiny lead. I think that's a direct opposite of what we should be doing. I don't think any of the elected members, the 
special responsibility members should be involved in scrutiny in any way. I'm talking about page 10, 121, the bottom paragraph. The chairman of the council will effectively be the scrutiny lead. So a, a nominated lead member for scrutiny would not be required. I think we really must take this question of scrutiny seriously. Mm. Um, it's the way our mother of parliaments, the House of Commons, works with its uh, select committees, and they include no, uh, none of the secretaries of state or ministers. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to do that. We've got to separate out scrutiny from decision making. And I don't think this report, or any report I've seen, does that, although I have complained about it before. It needs a proper map of the organisation for scrutiny and what its powers are uh, and its responsibilities are. And it cannot be headed by the Chairman of the Council. Thank you. Councillor Molson and then Councillor Mrs. Savile. Yeah, the only, the only point I would make is um, you look rather puzzled when I was talking about decision-making being delegated. I'd just draw your attention to paragraph 1.16, where that actually is exemplified. That's the paragraph that I got a little bit of concern Thank you. about. Yeah, no, no, it's just, it was just wondering which paragraph you were referring Sorry. to. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Mrs. Savile. person to be the lead member of scrutiny. The, chairman, the position of chairman of council is actually to ensure that policy is mm. actually taken and implemented by the officers and therefore I think it would be very difficult for that position to actually be the lead member for scrutiny. Also, by the nature of the, um, the work involved, the chairman of council works very closely with the senior officers within um, the corporate leadership team that is out of necessity, and I think it, it would be actually very difficult for the chairman to actually do that. So I do support Councillor Daly on that matter. I would just like to raise another comment, and I am very supportive that not a lot of reports to note are brought to council. But I have to say there are some instances that reports to note do need to come to council, and the one I will give you is the performance management of children's social care. Mm. Because by coming to, has been the children's committee, but coming to council with this vote is carried, it enables uh, members to scrutinise and challenge the work of children's services. And then when Ofsted comes to inspect the service, they look, as they have done previously, at the, YouTube, the recordings of meetings and it actually evidence that members are challenging uh, the service. So I think reports to note, certainly from children's uh, social care, need to come to council and I'm sure there are other ones as well. So I would just like to not, you know, for nothing to come that was to note because some of them are actually give a really important role in inspection regimes. The other thing, Chairman, I think obviously all those um, reports to note, it is important that somehow we do allow members to have knowledge of, what, of those reports because we live, we work in a small community, we are known by our electorate and they expect, they have an expectation of us to be aware. So I think you know, there is a lot of work to do between now and full council if this motion is carried. But there does have to be a way worked out that information is got to be made available to members, even if it isn't for, through the formal structures. And mm. I raised this at a DP meeting you know, several months ago. It has got, you know, members have got to be kept informed. Yeah, and I think you know, that is really important. May I, may I just add to that, because I agree with you absolutely, members have got to be informed, but members have also got to read the reports. Yes, yes. Um, and just finally, Chairman, um, I fully support a new Children's Partnership Board because we have a statutory duty to cooperate, but I would like to see, well, I would say four elected members on it. I think there should be more than just as the lead mm. member of the Children's.
Thank you. I would endorse everything you've just said, from scrutiny through to your last comment. Councillor McCarthy. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I basically endorsed just about everything that Councillor Savile said there, um, but I do agree with her and also with Councillor Daly that I think it would be inappropriate for the Chairman of Council to chair any scrutiny committee. It doesn't seem, mm. it, it, to me, that doesn't look right. Um, I have to say that I found the existing system work quite well. I enjoyed working with it, but I just feel, thanks to the Boundary Commission, because of their incorrect recommendations, we have faced a situation where we have 25% fewer councillors. We're three missing today. If we're three, four, three missing when we've only got 16, we, we just do not have enough people to even think about doing scrutiny, in my view. It, you, you have got to simplify the system, or at least recommend simplification of the system. Clearly, the new council, whether it's full of new faces or not, can take a different view. It can actually sort of tear up what we've decided, should it feel that it's not working. And it doesn't have to wait for a year, necessarily. Um, so I don't have any problem about recommending... I would have recommended option B. I would quite like to have seen a small children's committee and a small um, community services committee, just simply so you've got to take community services, two people focused on lifelong learning, two people focused on active silly, two people focused on housing, um, and so on. It just, just, it would seem happier with me, but that's maybe because I'm used to working with that system and I'm not standing, so there's a kind of affection for the way it worked. But I don't think the status quo is operable. It, ju it just isn't. Um, mm. And to defer again would be a mistake, in my view. But I would have preferred option B. I think it gives a little bit more room for manoeuvre that much more quickly for the mm. new council. I, I, the only thing I would say is that I would have... I have read what the director has said, but I would wish she would have been here because I would have quite liked to have questioned her about one or two of the things she said. Um, I, you know, I take what she says at face value, but I think it does leave one or two things, one or two questions in my mind that are unanswered. So, as I say, option B would have been my favourite. Yeah, thank but, you. Uh, option A is preferable to option C. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. In terms of the new governance arrangements and the numbers of councillors, to quote... Your neighbour, we are where we are, so we have to deal with that. Um, That's why I feel we've got to make a decision. I'm going to take <laughs> Councillor Sims and Councillor Barclay. Um, yes, yeah. well, Richard, uh, regarding the constitution of children's services and the um, community services, I think we have to sort of take officers' advice on how we move forward with that because it, potentially it's a legal minefield. There's, there's a lot of things there. I just wanted to absolutely agree with Colin. The very last person you want being lead member for scrutiny is the chairman of council. I mean, I'm not talking about specific people, but, but um, I mean, essentially, it's who's guarding the guards, isn't it? And uh, yeah. so, absolutely, Colin. I'm, I meant to bring that up, but um, I didn't have notes on this because I know we've got the actual paperwork, but thank you for bringing that up, Colin. It's very important that the lead member for scrutiny is not the chairman of council. I think we mostly agree on that. Um, <laughs> Councillor Barclay. Thank you. Um, it seems to me this meeting has been called really on a matter of principle, and that is that we, we as a council did take a decision and some members were not happy with that and wanted to reverse it. And perhaps that will become a pattern um, for the future. Who knows what the new council will want to do? Um, I hope it's not the case, of course. When it comes to this particular decision, I do feel quite strongly that it should have been a decision taken by the new council, or at least very firmly ratified after a fairly short period of practice. And I would like to ask what damage would be done by a delay of some months before this, um, the new system became implemented. What, um, what harm would be done? Perhaps good would come of it. 
perhaps the monitoring office could offer some yeah, good um, I, I, th I think that many off-island colleagues have identified their qualms on this, so I think that would be a potential harm. Mr. Williams, would you like to... Could somebody just switch light off for me? Thank, thank you. you. Um, just to pick up on a couple of points um, that have been made, I think the first thing I, I just wanted to draw to uh, members' attention, um, you kindly read out, uh, Chairman, what Councillor Grotick has said, and I just wanted to, to clarify one point, um, because she did mention that the um, Section 151 officer was sort of happy for a short deferral. I, I just want to be clear that that's not taken out of context, um, uh, and to... to reiterate that the 151 officer I spoke to only this morning has confirmed that he supports option A. What he was saying was that clearly the, the extent of savings uh, anticipated to be made by option A in, uh, as against the budget that it could be implemented later in the year and still make the savings but I wouldn't want it to be interpreted that he was supporting a deferral per se. I think his view is the sooner you start making the savings the better and because of the pressure overall on your budget um, obviously, clearly, option A is brought in sooner rather than later. That will help. Having said that, I think it's also important to say that this is not, in case it's, it's suggested that these changes are predicated on saving money, I don't think that's the issue. I think partly, I guess, um, answer to, to uh, Councillor Barclay's point um, is set out on page 7. There are, there are a huge number of benefits that it's anticipated will come from implementing either option A or option B. Um, yes, in one sense you could argue that there wouldn't be any damage. It's difficult for me to say what would be damaged by a delay, um, but I guess I would counter that by saying you know, the, the advantages, as I believe there are in option A and option B, are set out in the report, um, I think strongly suggest that the sooner the, the streamlined arrangements are implemented, the better. And I think it's far better, as I've indicated strongly throughout, that this council determines what it feels is the best thing for the new council moving forward, but clearly um, they should be reviewed. Um, and you made the point, and I think it was made also by another councillor, um, that maybe a year was a little bit late to start looking at, and I think you made that at, um, at a previous meeting in February. Um, and what I would say is, and I supported it at that meeting, to say that um, I think that the review should start after six months, um, and I'm, I'm quite happy if members wanted to change the last recommendation to just say that, that, the, that before the end of the council year that actually the review commences after six months. Mm -hmm. I think that's a sensible um, step to take um, and I think that would actively engage the new council in the new arrangements and if it wanted to change it sooner rather than later then it would have the option to do so. Um, but my view is that it's the, the better option is to change it now and to give the council the opportunity to, um, to change it later. I think the final point, Madam Chairman, whilst I've got the microphone to say, is I absolutely agree 100% in terms of scrutiny and the importance of scrutiny. My understanding is that scrutiny doesn't work particularly well at the moment. Um, I think it's absolutely vital that within the new governance arrangements that scrutiny works well. I think it is set out in the report, sufficient for you to be confident that scrutiny will be addressed. I think it's right to say that until you've made the decision to go with option A, determining how those scrutiny arrangements will work in detail has been difficult. However, having said that, I know that Bob is working on the scrutiny handbook, which I think will be really useful and really important. Um, there isn't a lot of time between now and the 25th of May when you're in your meeting. Um, so we've got, as Councillor Seville said, um, Bob and colleagues back, uh, back on the mainland have a lot of work to do if you go with the decision today. That's why I'm really keen that you do make a decisive decision today. But I, we will come back with detailed arrangements at the annual meeting that set out the principles of scrutiny and really reinforce what you've said, Councillor, that scrutiny is really important in the life of this council. And clearly we've taken on board the point that's been made around the chairman uh, not being um, the chairman of any of the scrutiny committees, whether it be statutory or discretionary scrutiny, and we will make sure that's reflected in what we bring back at the annual meeting. Thank you, Thank Chairman. You. Thank, if I can... Do you want to come back on? Yes. <coughs> Thank you for that. Um, as somebody who probably doesn't believe fully, <coughs> and it's based on experience, in either scrutiny or savings for the recent past, um, I feel that we do need a lot of information and training on both issues. But I do feel as a matter of principle, this meeting was requested by six councillors, three of whom are leaving. 
the new councillors have got to have a feeling of ownership in the new system, whatever it is. And I think the way to do that is to actually defer the decision for a brief period and to, so that the debate is fully um, <coughs> reinforced by new membership. I think otherwise we'll start off in a very woolly area and I would rather see the decision making deferred rather than just subject to a review in the near future. Thank you. I'm going to take Councillor Guy and then Councillor Coombs and then Councillor Sims. Thank you, Chair. I um, totally endorse everything Councillor Barclay said. I personally joined this authority four years ago, believing in democracy. As it's stated in 1.6, the full council, and it was the full council, decided a motion. This is a blatant meeting. It's been called to overturn a decision. That's fine. Six members have called this meeting. Um, I personally think it's shameful that it's come to this because I've got a lot of respect for the members that have called this meeting. Agreeing with Councillor Barclay, there's a lot of members wanting to make this decision today that aren't even standing again. And going back to 1.6, it's why nine elected members voted to let the new council choose their destiny. Now, if, the, if we're going to go anywhere with this today, rather than defer it, go for A, Personally speaking, I think option B is a fair compromise. It keeps things a little similar to how they've worked. And let's be honest, they work for 60, 70 years as they have before. I'm all for change in the right direction. But I'm not very happy about this meeting, to be honest. But I, I would prefer to go with option B. Thank you. Councillor Coombs. Um, as I've played before, I play the newbie card certainly is probably the, the most recent uh, member on the, the current standing council. Um, the prospect of handing a new council uh, with all the other challenges the council faces, um, the task of organising their structure from, from, from square one dismays me. Uh, we've got far more important work to do. Um, so I'm wholeheartedly um, in support of option A. Um, if we look at the amount of member and officer time that's gone into uh, the DPP process that's, that's led us to this point, um, if only we put this so much effort into some other areas of council work, I think we do need to get on with it. Um, I think if we, if we kick this can down the road and put it in the lap of the new council, I think it's unfair of the new council um, to echo um, Jonathan Smith's comments um, and for any new councillors, you're going to be desperately trying to find your feet and deal with the issues that are really important to the community. Um, and I think we could be quite rightly slated if we just seem to be there endlessly reorganising deck chairs. Um, I think th the questions have been addressed. Um, and certainly I, I, I'll be going for option A with looking at the review in six months to see how it's working. But, yeah, let's not tie our shoelaces together for the new council. Thank you. Councillor Sims. I think... If we don't make any decision and then it comes back to the new council, say in July, after that, certainly after the first rollout of committees, you've got an enormous problem. You've got 14 people with SRAs. They've all got a pecuniary interest in what happens. And you go into a world because you can't make this, this decision with two councillors. I don't know if Richard could comment on that because I'm, it's, a, it's a tough one. Mr Williams, would you like to? Well, I think the difficulty is that if you go with a deferral and you go with the status quo, um, your difficulty is that you have to set those up, we have to populate those, we have to revise the standing orders on the basis, because if you're deferring it, you're not going to bind a new council through that, then obviously we're going to have to presume that it's the status quo for however long. The, 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 the standing orders in terms of reference to the constitution need to be tied up anyway, which we'd have to do. Um, I guess you know, if, I'm, if I'm a new member standing in this council and I inherit some arrangements and there are arrangements in place, I'm not going to make a decision about the change until I've experienced what the existing arrangements are. So I think that's logical. Um, and so that's why I don't think I've, uh, it's uh, you know, abusing the sovereignty of the new council to make a decision. You are the ones with the experience. You know how the existing has happened. You know what the boundary of you has, has, has given you. Um, you know what changes perhaps need to make to make things work better, and that's what you're putting in place, and I think that's, that's wholly appropriate. And as I said earlier, and um, 
repeatedly. I think it, it is, from, from my point of view as monitoring officer, it's much better for you as a council to determine what you think, having had the experience of the last four years would work, and knowing what the boundary review has given you, that you make the decision that's best for the new council, and new council can then change it or tweak it as it feels fit with the DPP meeting on a regular basis and with the council meeting on a regular basis. I think that is the, for me, is the logical uh, way to go, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Daly and then Councillor Molson. I want to make one, uh, one more point about scrutiny and then uh, about how we can deal with the, the whole thing. Scrutiny will need an officer at least, if not an officer team, because it will need them to, the officers to be able to present alternative points of view to the ones the regular officers have put. So I think we need, although it will cost more money, we need to have a scrutiny officer or a scrutiny team in place ready. Now as far as dealing with whether we should make the decision or the council, the new council should, can I suggest as a way forward that we come to what we think is the best solution, and I understand your desires to, to work efficiently, um, but that we make this a recommendation to the new council that they can deal with fairly quickly. It could be at the start of a, the first meeting or even a, a pre-meeting, uh, not handed over. They will feel, as Councillor Barclay says, they will have ownership of it then. Otherwise, they'll feel always, oh, we've gone off on the wrong foot and we were forced into it by the old council. So I would suggest that whatever we agree today, that it, it be a recommendation to the new council. Thank you. Councillor Mawson. Um, a couple of three points that I've got. I, I totally agree with the fact that the chairman of the council should not be um, the lead member as far as scrutiny is concerned. I think that would be wholly inappropriate as far as uh, any of that is concerned. Um, a point that has not really been addressed um, in the meeting but has been within the report is that and I, I exemplify the fact that I actually voted against the, the original uh, motion. Um, one of the concerns that I had then was that there was insufficient detail within those reports for me to support it. However, I'm reasonably content now that there is a lot more detail within this report and I'm happy to go with either A or B. One of the, one of the points that has not been made that is if we stay with the, the current status quo, with the reduced number of councils, we are going to have difficulty in populating the subcommittees. I think that is something that has not been said um, around the table and I think, I think needs, to, needs to be said um, in open debate. I think there would be a great problem in, in keeping those committees, as we stand at the moment, fully populated with councillors. Uh, leaning on from all of that is that I would like to make a proposal that uh, recommendation number six uh, will say that, uh, that the revised arrangements be um, um, revised within six months of the new council. Rather um, than do you mean reviewed rather than revised? Sorry, reviewed. Yeah. Sorry, semantics. <laughs> yes, reviewed in six months. I think 12 months is far too long. And it will give... Uh, credence to what Councillor Daly was saying is the fact that then the new council within six months can actually take ownership of that uh, with a working arrangement in place so that it is, it is there to keep, the count, to, keep, to keep the council operating under normal parameters before that. I'll be quite happy to second that. Right, thank you. Um... Councillor Billsborough, sorry. Yes, Chairman, just one or two points. On page 15, the bottom paragraph, or the next bottom paragraph, it says, there is a risk the Council fails to make effective use of a reduced and restricted officer resource. All I'll say is, who is responsible for arriving at this reduced and restricted officer resource? I'll say no more on that, but, but just have to think about it. But what is more important, it is, on page 12, paragraph 27, it's pointed out that the recommendations presented will, and the outcome will not be set in stone. And I interpret that as they can be changed if there's good reason to change it. But my overall view is this, is that it is quite wrong 
not to take into account the opinion of new members. They will have perhaps other views and refreshing minds. Uh, I really think that we ought to not go for option A. And because of its importance, we ought to stand up and be counted. And I'm hoping the proposer and seconder of option A will agree to a recorded vote. And I will as a seconder. Thank you very much. There is absolutely no intention to um, stymie the work of the new council. I think we've made that quite clear. What we want to do is to give them, as Councillor Sim said earlier, a loose enough structure that they've got guidance, but they can craft it in the way they would like in the detail. I think that is quite clear. Councillor Sim. Um, in response to Andy's comments, and I do take on your on board what you're saying, I think that people could perceive this as a, an attempt to reverse the position, a decision um, that we took in March. However, members did say they wanted more information. Ted has indicated he's moved a little bit, and it was such a close vote, and I was very concerned about what was going to happen with the new council. I know Chris was, and a number of others were. So I think it was actually a perfectly reasonable thing to bring this meeting because of the level of concern. Now, if it had been... I mean, this doesn't happen very often, and there is a mechanism within Stanley Alderston to enable it to happen. I think in this case it was a good thing to happen, simply because a number of, there was a great deal of concern amongst some members about the decision about what would happen next time. And I think it's been really, really mm. useful having this meeting, particularly post the informal with EPP we had on the 16th. Just to That's come good. back there, I, I agree with what you said. This paper is, is amazing. It's got a lot of information that we should have had six months ago. We wouldn't be in this situation now if we had had this paper six months ago. That's my opinion. I'm all for change, but I honestly believe option B is a fairer way forward for the new council. They've got more input. Thank you. Uh, there were lights on. I thought Councillor Mrs Peacock's light was on, but... It... I was really going to reiterate what Councillor Sim said. But I would like the councillors to know that those of us that are retiring don't suddenly stop caring for the Isles of Scilly. Yeah. We, um, we will continue, well, I will continue to fight for my island and the Isles of Scilly. Um, so watch it. I'm not going to go down. <laughs> I can see this little trinity of people who are standing down. <laughs> Councillor Mrs. Mrs. Summer, before you build the barricades in that corner of the room. Well, I was going to say that um, obviously the committee system has evolved over numerous years. Um, and maybe I'm sure the committee system has evolved over numerous years. And maybe I should finish by saying originally when I joined this council, we used to have an off island committee. And maybe we should reinstigate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Daly. Thank you, Chairman. I want to try to understand how this new lead officer process will work. Is it intended to have cabinet meetings with the leader of the council no. and the, uh, all the lead members together in between councils? Um, because otherwise I don't know how you're going to refine the ideas. And particularly I'm worried about the lead member. Uh, 
Will there be a deputy lead member? It's going to be a very lonely position to try to work out. Those what will your be the decisions is. of the new council. Sorry? Those will be the decisions of the new council. Okay. Absolutely. But you don't think there'll be a cabinet for That's the shaking of your head? There is no structure for a cabinet system, no. Okay. Are there any further comments? If not, I had a proposal. Um, there was a revision to uh, six. It would possibly make more sense to take that one first. Um, so, Councillor Molson, if, if we're going to take, I, we either take the recommendations one to five as proposed and then take the recommendation six, or if members are happy, I'll take the revision to six and see if that passes, and then we could take the, council, the uh, items on block. Any particular feelings on that? Councillor Molson. I'd just say that it would be sensible to take item six as a revision first and then take um, the rest of it. So that, that is that rem members review the effectiveness of the revised government arrangements um, in six months. Yeah? Yeah, that was proposed and seconded. Those in favour, please show clearly. If you wish to... Councillor Billsborough, we're just talking here about the review within six months. Do you feel the need to record your vote on that? Right. Can we just show clearly again those in favour of a, revision within, um, a review within six months, please show clearly. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. So... Recommendations one to six were proposed and seconded. Um, so the proposal was for option A, and that was seconded. Those in favour of option A, please show clearly. Can we have the names? Call, yeah, please, on um, standing orders. I'm just giving the officer time to, to, to do this. Uh, Sorry, you don't need to put your hands up anymore. We're going to have a recorded vote, right, so you're okay. going to have to... Uh, Councillor Billsborough. Against. Councillor Doran-Smith. In favour. Councillor Barclay. Against. Councillor Nellums. In favour. I think it might help if you put your lights on, because the mics pick it up better. In favour. Councillor Coombs. In favour. Councillor Mumford. In favour. Councillor Molson. Abstain. Councillor Guy. Against. I would have preferred option B, but I'm prepared to support option A. Four. In favour. Two. In favour. Against. Councillor Sims. Or the Vice Chairman. Four. Chairman of Council. Mm. Chairman of Council. Four. Someone add that up for me? Could we know what the. Could you put your mic on? Oh, right. No. Yeah, I've got four votes against, uh, nine in favour and one abstention. Thank you. There is a lot of work for the new council to do. I think, I firmly believe that we've given them a structure to start their work. The, council, the new council may well not agree, may well decide to revisit the arrangements. That is for them, but I think it is up to us to help them start on the best foot possible. Thank you very, very much for attending this morning. Um, with that, I will close the meeting. I'm sorry? Are we agreeing two to four and five? Is that all agreed in with we, one? We agreed them on block, yes. Okay. <laughs>